Okay, it's a nice May day. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, make some biochar. Again, this is the retort oven. You can see uh, that it has holes in the top for the airflow and holes in the bottom. So the air comes in through here, works it way, its way up, and uh, as everything burns from the top down, uh, it'll automatically suck the air in. Now, in the directions, you can see I have these larger triangle holes at uh, 90 degrees around the can, and then I drilled two 3 8 inch holes between those that are in line with the top of the holes in the top of the can. So above the triangle holes are three holes. And then in the sides, there's just two holes at the bottom and two holes at the top. Um, inside your retort oven, which is a 30 gallon drum, you can see in the bottom, there's a cross of holes. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, those are the only holes in this can. Uh, I want the, it to build up pressure and push the gases down through those holes. Uh, but you don't want flames getting up in here and burning this wood in here. You're basically cooking all of the cellulose out of the wood and leaving pure carbon when it's done. One last thing I forgot to mention here is uh, the, the, the distance between the outer barrel and the inner barrel is exactly one and a half inches. So if you rip two by fours, it makes good uh, kindling for around the edges. Um, now, I, I ripped all of these at one and a half inch, but they kind of just sit in here like this. Uh, but you can shove other stuff like sticks and things like that. Also, the other thing I wanted to mention in here is that um, these are cut up into small pieces. Um, you don't want too thick of a, a piece of wood, especially in the hardwoods, because it won't carbonize all the way through and you'll have brown spots in the inside. So you want to make this, you know, no more than two or three inches thick uh, on any one side. That's why all this hardwood is cut up. Now you can see that this is a mixture of soft wood and hardwood, and that's that gives you a good biochar mix. So you always want to mix that up and have some soft wood, soft sticks, uh, and some hardwoods in there. Top is on. It's filled to the very top. Um, now I'm going to cover all of this with the various sticks, and I'll probably throw a couple extra pine cones on top of that so it burns fast. I'll probably throw a couple of those pieces of hardwood on there too so we get a good long burn on the top. The stuff inside has to be dry. So leave it out in the sun for a day. You know, don't do this right after a rain. You'll get a bad burn and you'll get brown spots. You don't really want that. Okay? And then just make sure that all the wood inside is not like any kind of manufactured wood with glues or anything like that. It has to be like natural. Um, if you used a pallet that had weird chemicals on it, don't use that, okay? Uh, I still have to fill in this other, these little gaps here and make sure all that is really packed down nicely so we get a good burn down the sides because that's what keeps it going. And uh, keeps it at 700 plus degrees inside this tin. Uh, this lid is just uh, on like a friction. Uh, I didn't clamp it down or anything. You don't have to. Some of the gases escape through the top too, and that's okay. You just need to make sure no flames get it down in there, because that'll ruin your your carbonization. Okay, it's packed and ready. Um, various sticks, pine cones. I put paper in there to help kindle the fire, get it going. Just on top. Um, no accelerants. Don't put any accelerants in here. Okay, you want to keep it as pure as possible. Yes, there is glue in some of these uh, pieces of wood, but it's on the outside. You just don't want to get gas inside your, your retort. This is with it lit up. You can kind of see the flames coming out the top now. It's, uh, it was smoking a lot when it started. To make this better, what you need to do is actually add another two-foot stack to that so it's a four-foot stack. That way that flame will burn that extra smoke as it comes out the top. I don't know if you can see it there. There's a blue flame coming out. That 
is actually the gas is coming out from the 30 gallon pump that's burning on the bottom. The yellow flame is the wood burning, but that blue is actually the gases from inside of the uh, 30 gallon drum. All right, at this point, there's very little smoke coming out the top. That's how you can tell it's actually carbonizing things. Uh, it's burned down all of the uh, uh, wood inside. And so now, you can see that, that, that metal is red hot. And what's making it hot is the air coming in through uh, the bottom holes, the big holes. And the gases are coming out of the uh, wood inside of the retort and that's why there's not a lot of smoke anymore okay big reveal it's uh, 8 a.m. the next day it's cooled down it went till probably about midnight last night so let's take this off See everything burned down to ashes on top. Ah, Eudemus. That is it right there. Now listen to this. Yeah, it sounds like glass. Be cool. Pure carbon. Everything. And it breaks. No brown. No, there's a little brown in that. Nice. These things are cool. That's what I like doing. Yeah. Pine cone. It's shatter. So that's what you're looking for, is that that glass sound when it shatters. Pretty cool. See, it dropped almost 40% this time. But there was a lot of air in there, so that's probably why. Air space. But that's how you make the charcoal for the uh, biochar. Now we have to charge it. Now, I wanted to show what happens when you grow your tomatoes in biochar. Um, this plant right here is one plant and it has 57 tomatoes on it. It probably helps a little that I'm growing it next to beans, but I cannot believe how many tomatoes, and there's still flowers on there, and there is no blight. By this time every year, for the past seven years, I've had blight destroy these almost instantly. So far, so good. We'll see if it works completely. These things still have to turn red, but it's doing great.